Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I just got done filming the short version of this, which you may have already seen. So if you've already seen that video, sorry, I'm gonna be rehashing a lot of the information that I had in that video and just going much more detailed, diving much deeper in this video. It's gonna be a very long one. So grab your popcorn, get comfortable, put on your pajamas or whatever you're doing because I'm gonna get super detailed. All right, so in some of these videos on my channel, I'm talking about my Tacoma. This is a 2016 TRD off-road Tacoma. It's got a little bit of lift. It's, it's my daily driver, but it's also my overlanding, overlanding rig. If you want more info on kind of my whole build and the philosophy behind it, find the first part of this series, the ultimate or the amazing or something to Tacoma overland build. And I talk about the reason that I built the truck in the way that I built it. In this video, I'm gonna be diving deep into everything you see back here, which is foundational on the Diamondback truck cover. Right now, I'm gonna interject a little bit of info in case you're interested in buying this. All right, guys, got the info from Diamondback. I'm gonna have a link below. Clicking that link will activate a coupon for you. There are 25 of them available and that'll give you $100 off of your purchase. So I'm guessing it's by charges, like there's 25 charges, and once one is redeemed, then there will only be 24 left, uh, not actual link clicks. So anyways, click the link if you wanna save 100 bucks. Also, they do have a military discount, which is 10% off, um, so you may have to contact them to figure out how to get that, because I don't think you can just get it through their website, I think you gotta call in. Anyways, they didn't want to give a discount that was greater than the discount they give uh, military, and that's active duty and retired, I believe. Sorry, some bird going crazy. So click the link for $100 off. That's good till June 30th, so you gotta act fast. I'll try and get this video uploaded today, uh, so that'll basically give you a week to capitalize on that. So 100 bucks off. These things never really go on sale. There's not really, other than the military discount, there's not really a way to save money on them. So if you're interested in them, that's gonna be the best way to save money. All right, back to the regularly scheduled video. Okay, cool, back into the breakdown of the bed setup. What we have here is called a Max Trax. This is a traction device. So back in the day when I kind of first started off-roading and for years and years before that, since the caveman times basically not really because they didn't have cars. But when you get stuck, it's typically a traction issue. Your tires are spinning in mud or snow or sand and you no longer have traction to propel your car forward. So the easiest way to get traction is shove stuff under the tires. And back in my day, we shoved carpet remnants, floor mats, sticks, branches, whatever, underneath the tires to allow them to get a little more traction. These are newer, they're not brand new, but these kind of devices are newer and they work much better. So you jam these on your tire, it gives you traction, you can spin out and get out of wherever you were stuck. It makes recovery a breeze. So obviously much easier to deploy than a winch or something like that, and it'll get you out of you know, 90, 95%. Uh, I've had generic ones of these in the past that have served me all right, but I, I stepped up to the Max Trax. These are like, you know, kind of the best ones, I guess, or the most famous anyway. They are a pretty penny, but I was willing to pay it. Uh, what I got them for is because they have a cool mounting system, and some other ones may have it too, but these have like a specific mounting system that allows you to lock it, put it on and off, very super easy, which I'll get into. I'll get into right now. They come in a bunch of different colors as well. Uh, I went with like an OD theme because I had an OD Pelican case and I just like OD. So I think OD plus the quicksand kind of looks cool. And yeah, if you want orange or blue or red or whatever, they have all those. All right, so how these things are mounted is with these pins. So these pins here, you buy, they come in a four pack, one, two, and then three and four, which I'm not using because I don't really need to with my setup. So depending on how you're gonna mount it, you may wanna use all four, or you could probably get by with two. I'm not telling you you can, because if these things fling off when you only have them mounted with two, I don't want you to sue me. So I mounted them with two and you can do whatever you want. So we have here, these come with this rack system. So I'll link to all this stuff again down below. But this rack system, I bought it, it's all aluminum, super lightweight, but also pretty burly and solid. This rack system comes with these, which are really kind of like ladder stopper supports. They come with little thumb screw ones that you use, but I replaced that with a traditional bolt to make stealing this a little bit more difficult. Um, this is intended to 
be mounted in the reverse way and you can put your ladder up on here and it holds it tight. What I did was drill a hole through this. So you gotta drill a hole through and through and that will allow this pin, this Max Trax mounting pin, to mount in here. You can drill this at whatever height you want and I could probably cut this off if I really cared. Sorry, my dog's barking. I could cut this off if I really cared. Where are you going, bud? but I'm just leaving it for now. Now I drilled at this height because this bar fits in nicely into this Max Trax here. And what that allows me to do is keep my bars at a nice long length if I need to use them for something else, while also allowing the Max Trax to suck in as much as possible. So if you wanna do that, you can just kind of size it, put the Max Trax in, mark your, mark your holes, and then drill away. You do obviously, as you see, have to mount the nut inside of here. So as you're threading this through, you're not gonna be able to mount it on this side on the angle anyways, so you're gonna mount it, want to mount it straight. You do have to drill a hole through this and through this because the bolt, sorry, it's hard for me to see, because the bolt does extend almost all the way to it. Or you'll have to cut your pins shorter if you really want to, and then that will allow you to drill through only one. This is just aluminum. It will drill through with just any metal or wood metal combo bit. Did the same thing over here on the other side, now if you wanna run this system, a very important thing to note is you're gonna to wanna to put your racks at that distance. I mounted the racks before I even had the, the max tracks and just by luck, I mounted them at a distance that almost worked. As you can probably see here, I had to drill out a little bit to allow this to fit. But if I had mounted this rack just about a half inch back or that rack about a half inch forward, this would have fit perfectly. So I suggest if you wanna run a system like this specific to Max Tracks, you're gonna to wanna to put your crossbars exactly at that distance, which is about 36 inches. It's like 35 point something inches. But that's just one thing to note. You can kind of mount these wherever, but not totally. You can't totally mount them wherever because you'll see under here, there are cross members. So you obviously either gotta dodge those cross members or if you wanna go through them, you'll need a significantly longer bolt. So what I did here was purchase this rack system, like I said earlier, which is an aluminum bar that has like these T slots in it. So these things mount in these slots here and you can mount other stuff inside of the slots if you want to. And the slots are how the crossbars are actually mounted to the tower. These came, I think, in 72 inch length and I cut them down to about 65 inch length, if I recall correctly. So if you want them to extend out further, you can. If you want them to be shorter, you can. They're just aluminum, so they cut relatively easy. These towers normally will net you about five inches roughly between the underside of the bar here and whatever you're mounting them on. Since you can see obviously here, I wanted to mount my Pelican case, I did opt to raise this. What this is here is just a tube, a square tube of aluminum. You could use steel if you want, but I'm trying to cut weight wherever I can. So I did aluminum, so I spray painted them black and kind of did a final coat with like Plasti Dip to kind of give it a similar texture to this um, and make them black and just kind of less, less noticeable. So they kind of at a glance just look like part of the rack system, nothing too, too crazy out of the ordinary, but really they are risers. So what that means is the bolts, the mounting hardware that comes with these will no longer work and you'll have to get longer bolts. The only thing to note is you'll get these bolts and you wanna put big old washers underneath them. This is aluminum and while you know it's metal and it's relatively robust, you wanna make these difficult to pull out because you're putting weight up on top of here, right? A rooftop tent. So put nice big washers on the underside of this. I also put the foam thing underneath here that it comes with to keep this nice and sealed and waterproofed. If you find water leaking through here, which you probably won't, I haven't yet, you could add like a little dab of silicone and run it around this hole here because that's how water will be entering uh, if 
if anything, but I haven't had any issues. I drilled these holes kind of crooked, <laughs> unfortunately, so some of these are a little bit crooked. Anyway, that's what I did on all four corners of this. Rooftop tent, pretty standard. I have a CVT, uh, I forget the model, but I'll link it down below. This mounts to the crossbar with four of these, so a bolt basically on either side. I did get longer bolts because the ones I had, and I don't know if they're all like this, were just barely long enough to grab. Um, so I got a bolt that would allow enough to grab, but still not stick out too far because I did want to run this Pelican case underneath as you can see. So I still have clearance to run the Pelican or other stuff. Like I talk about in the other video, this is about seven inches now here, from here to the bar, a little bit less obviously to this bolt. What we can put back here is anything that will fit there. So those tubs that fit under your bed will fit here. You could put your camping chairs, a table, whatever you want to do on top. That's why I made this higher because I wanted to put the Pelican and other stuff to free up as much room as possible in my bed. So let's talk about the Pelican real quick. You'll see here that these I mounted. So I'll link to all this stuff that you need to mount this. I wanted to use black hardware again. I think I had to get this off of like eBay because my local hardware store didn't have anything and Amazon didn't have anything. Probably other hardware stores do, but I wanted to use black hardware where I could because all the black hardware on the new Diamondback covers is so sexy. They moved to having black hinges from their old chrome ones, which I think is a, just a huge, subtle, but huge upgrade. Anyways, I'm with black D-rings here. And what this allows is, sorry, I'm trying to do this all one-handed, so we'll see how it goes. I mounted it in such a way where when it's folded down like this, it's flat with the thing. So sliding this on and off doesn't hit it. And I went with a D-ring because of that. So I didn't use a different mounting mechanism or something, I used D-rings. I use these all over. If you've seen my other truck videos, uh, if you haven't, go watch them. But if you have, I add these to the bed um, because I love tie-down points. So while even, I have, even though I have this tie-down point right here, I wanted to mount this left left of these hinges here uh, rather than going on top of the hinges because I don't want to go on top of the hinges. So I wanted to be able to mount this in the center, relative center of this. So I have one of these here and then I have one on the back side as well. What I do on the back side is use one of these one foot rubber bungees. So this will stretch down and I can take the bungee off the bungee's hooked up to the Pelican. You do have to modify your Pelican case if you want to mount it like I mounted it. So you have the D-ring here and then I'll show you what it attaches to up here. But real quick, what you can see here, I shifted the Pelican, but when it's all latched down, this D-ring here and this D-ring line up and now I can put a padlock through here to actually lock my Pelican case to my Diamondback cover if I'm somewhere that I'm worried about it getting stolen, I keep some padlocks in my bed later, I'll show you. But anyways, I added this D-ring, and underneath here I put a little rubber washer on all of these to give it a little bit more waterproofing. So water does not get in through my newly drilled holes. I wanted to do it here between this hinge and this hinge because like I showed earlier, the hinges stick up. And now this sticks up a little bit, so it all sticks up in the same place um, so that the rest of the bed cover is flat and any protrusion we have is all uniform with the hinges. So now that can lock up there. Ooh, I don't know if you wanted this level of detail. Hang on a second, let me pull this Pelican case down. So what you'll see here is I mounted this D-ring here and another one on this side and then one more like I showed earlier on the back. This is what allows it to padlock onto the case, or onto the bed cover. So the back one is nice because it lays flush, doesn't really get in the way of anything, uh, so that's no big deal. These ones do lay flat, obviously, so it doesn't you know, stick up like this all the time, so it can lay flat like that or like that. Doesn't add much, and I actually found that this, just kind of moving the Pelican case around and stuff, was a nice little addition for that. The underside of these D-rings do have kind of some feet that press into the Pelican so it doesn't rotate left and right like that. 
Pelican cases, in whatever case, you know, you don't have to use a Pelican, obviously, but whatever case you use, uh, probably is gonna be pretty rigid. But you still do want to put a nice big washer underneath. This doesn't look very big, but it is, in person, it's a pretty big washer. So this isn't gonna have any pull through. Also, the beauty of the D-rings is it's pulling, I don't know what to call this, laterally, I guess. So it's not pulling up like this, it's pulling to the side. So the stress on this is really reduced because this is squeezed in between this D-ring and the washer back here, and that's not going anywhere. I did get the size, and I'll link to all these sizes as I remember, that just allows it to be as flush as possible. So we don't want this to stick into the Pelican case uh, and you know take away from the interior. This is the other one that is for the lock. This is some stuff that I was building a, a tent. I was curious if I could make the diamond back into a like sleeping tent um, with nothing but some PVC and a tarp which I succeeded. Maybe I'll do a video on that later. So yeah, I'll put the Pelican case up top. I connect the rear bungee first, and then I use this, which is just to cut down one of these guys, which I got on Amazon, which I'll link to. And then I pull that tight, and the Pelican case isn't going anywhere with that. So it's the easiest, quickest way to mount a Pelican case that you want to remove and when I get to camp, I actually turn this Pelican case into a table that I cook on and stuff. So I'll show you that little mod in the future at some point. But anyways, the Pelican isn't just to carry stuff and look cool, though it does do those things. It's also to use when I get to camp. While we're here, why don't we look in the bed a little bit. Back in the back, I have a Rotopax mount. That's for this, which is just sitting here because I just emptied it into my gas tank. Um, so for those of you that don't know, without additives, fuel doesn't last that long. I set myself an alarm, a reminder every two months. So when I fill this fuel, I set a reminder. I say, Google, remind me in two months to empty my roto packs. And when Google reminds me, then I put this fuel in right into my tank and put some fresh fuel in there. I'm rarely using fuel when I go overlanding, so... I keep this in the very back where I can access if I need to, but it's not in the way and I'm not trying to show it off and look how cool I am with my Rotopacks. It's in there for an emergency and honestly, for the most part, it's in there for an emergency for other vehicles. I don't typically go anywhere where I'm gonna go out of range of a single tank of gas. So I'll bring this along, yes, for emergencies for myself, but also to help other people that maybe run out of fuel, either on the road, like in a blizzard or something, or off-road somewhere. So that's more for other people, and I keep it in the back because I never really access it. In the back also, I have a axe mounted, and these are mounted in this channel. So Tacoma has this bed channel here uh, where you can mount a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff mounts into it. So this is a Rotopax mount that fits into the channel that I'll link to. This is an axe that I'll link to, and this is quick fists that mount into the channel with these T-nuts, which I will also link to. The T-nuts will allow you to mount anything into this Tacoma bed rail channel, which is super handy. The axe I have in here mounted back here, instead of, you know, exterior somewhere I could mount it, but I just, the axe is like a legit weapon, and I don't want that mounted somewhere that people can just grab the axe and smash my window or kill someone very easily. Obviously, you could kind of do that with the shovel or the high lift or whatever, but the axe just seems, I don't know, and I don't use it as much. I don't need the ax in a recovery scenario. Uh, I might need it at camp or I might need it for something, but I don't need it if I'm stuck. So everything else I have mounted is something that I need quick access to if I'm stuck. The ax, I usually actually bring along a little hatchet with my camping stuff, so I don't even use this ax really pretty much ever. It's more for an emergency, but it's tucked back away there, so no problem. It doesn't interfere with anything and I have it there just in case. What you also may have been seeing is this stuff up in here. So this is underneath the bed. So here's the top of the bed cover, and we go underneath. And what I have here are some nets. I wanted to try a couple different kinds out. So this net is like all like a rubber material. 
And this net is more your typical kind of elastic uh, cord type material. What I did here was mount these. So I bought like, just like a hundred pack of these kayak things for like 10 bucks or less. And they're like little, sorry, I'm trying to film, little kind of things that you use to secure ropes or whatever on kayaks. I mounted them here and the screws are just self-tapping screws. So you don't have to drill holes into this. This will drill its own hole as you're installing it. So I can't really, camera's at a weird angle. I can't really see if it's focused. And this will allow you to hook nets on or do any number of things. What I thought and what I may do is get some shock cord and just run a bunch of these and just have a whole like shock cord system underneath here to mount whatever I want. Now what you see under here, and again, it's kind of hard for me to see, there's these cross members. The cross members of, especially the HD has a lot of them, are what gives the tonneau rigidity. That's why you can literally park an ATV on top of these bed covers, is because these cross members, these braces give it strength. But what that also means is there's some wasted space up in here in between the cross members. So basically the cross members will sit flush here, but the cover you see goes up. So there's this much amount of kind of wasted space and being me, crazy organization freak, I wanted to reclaim some of that. So I said, look at all this valuable space we have up here. What can we use it for? So I thought of a mechanism and these ones are mounted different. I actually found that this works better when I just mount these on the bottom. They're easier to mount in there and the hooks seem to work easier. So going forward, I'd probably mount them like this, just straight up into the bed. But anyways, with these kayak things, with some self-tap things, a few minutes, plus these cargo nets, you now have storage to store stuff up underneath here. This is a little camp chair, so I always have a camp chair. I just leave it there unless I need it. And up here is a down jacket and a shell with some hand warmers. I've been out sometimes where I've greatly underestimated how cold it would be and maybe didn't bring a jacket or somebody else didn't bring a jacket. Just this last weekend, I brought a shell but no jacket because I completely spaced it. So I had to borrow a jacket from my friend. If I had this mounted at the time, I would have been like, oh man, I forgot a jacket, but boom, I have one back here for an emergency, kind of an emergency. So these are items that aren't super giant, but they are kind of bulky. You know, they don't really just fit under my back seat and my Tacoma. I like to, cl I like to keep my Tacoma interior pretty Spartan right now, so these wouldn't fit inside anywhere in my Tacoma. I do have this cleared out. I am working through a new bug out bag system for those that are curious, uh, which I'll get to later, but right now it's not back here. So I'll get into that a little bit later. Anyways, I reclaimed a little bit of space back here. I have had other ideas to put some like Velcro back here. What I have back here though is interesting. Sorry, I'm trying to see how I can film it. What I have here is a socket wrench, 13 millimeter, and a wrench wrench. So let me pull these down. What I did here was put these magnets. So these are like cell phone magnets with double-sided tape on them essentially, and I'll link to these again. So anyways, I stuck these up here because I wanted access to these tools. This is a 13 millimeter wrench. This is a like 13 millimeter open-ended wrench and kind of a socket system. And I always wanted these tools because this is the size for my tent. And this is also the size for my high lift. So these I'll get to later. So I wanted a nice way to always have these tools, easy access, but out of the way. And I didn't want to have to like dig in a drawer or go in my back seat. So I put little magnets on the other side of this, on the underside. And now I can just, I don't know where they are. I'm trying to do this while filming. Stick those back under there. And I actually did this before I went wheeling and these didn't fall. Tons of bumps and they stayed up there just fine.
Okay, and then we have the rooftop tent system, which is pretty basic. Um, so what I have here is it essentially attaches to the rails in four different places. You can mount this wherever you want. With the thing is with how this is mounted, the tent cannot fold out over this because it would hit that. So now I have my tent folded out over this way because this side we are clear. So my tent folds out over this way and it just goes over that stuff. Recently, I did get a pulley system, which I'll get into maybe later, but I use this pulley system to lift my tent right off my truck. So it's super easy, one person, undo the bolts, put the straps under, lift it right off, and then when I'm ready to camp, drop it right back on, put the bolts on. Just takes a couple minutes. Um, and that's a super easy system to mount my rooftop tent back onto my racks by myself. Okay, so inside of here, also I have these, which are bed stiffeners. The Tacoma bed is notorious for tweaking out, either when you put a big load on top. The Diamondback doesn't really have the issue because it pushes straight down, but some of your overlanding racks and stuff that are kind of angled and go onto the bed, are really, they're pushing out on your bed. So they're trying to flex your bed out. And if you can imagine, there's nothing that keeps your bed from flexing out in the back. In the front, obviously it's connected, but in the back it's not. So a lot of companies sell these bed stiffeners that prevent that from happening. Uh, these ones, a lot of times, and this one does too, come with a bunch of cool, you know, tie down points. So in addition to the stiffening of the bed that you get, you get some new tie down points. You could mount like an antenna back here. Obviously I can't because I have my cover on it, but it has some stuff like this. I love the Total Chaos ones because they're the most minimal. A lot of other ones are just like chunky. And so you kind of lose some bed real estate, like sliding things in and out. But the Total Chaos ones are the most minimal ones I've seen and they just kind of look the best. I like the design. I think it's good because they come all the way up to here as well. So they support the full height of the bed. A lot of them will stop right here, but the Total Chaos ones add this little bit of extra tie into these bolts. You gotta drill a couple, drill a couple holes here, but these tie into bolts that are already here. So you gotta drill one, two, three holes, and that's it, just through this thin metal over here. Anyways, bed stiffeners, uh, I wanted to do because you tweak it just going off road and stuff, but also I do have a lot of weight on, on top as well. The diamond back cover isn't crazy heavy. Tent is 150 pounds, the high lift is pretty heavy, the max tracks, the Pelican, so it all kind of adds up. Plus, you know, whatever I have in the back. So I end up kind of having a lot of weight back here. Okay, so the tent's set up and then we'll get over to the other side here. So what we have here is a high lift. This is actually a brand new high lift I, I just recently bought. I had an old high lift. I didn't really need to buy this one, uh, but my old high lift was like red and kind of collecting rust and dust. I had it previously on my uh, Land Rover Discovery, but my friend just bought a 4Runner and wanted a high lift and I was like, hey, do you want to buy my old one? And I'll get this new one. So I got a new one. So I haven't even used this one yet, but I haven't mounted it in a very clever way. This is a little sock to just kind of protect it from, there's like oil, stuff that you want to keep in here oiled and not really get dirty. Like obviously it can get dirty, but the less dirt you get in here, kind of the better the system will run. So I got this little sock. This is like a generic one for 12 bucks that I can link. And so this is the High Lift Extreme 48 inch. And the only additional thing I got is this. Daystar, I'll link to it again. Anyway, it keeps the it keeps the handle in here nice and tight and kind of prevents a little bit of rattling. So I mounted this with four bolts, as you can see here. A lot of mounts you'll see use two, but that's because they use much thicker bolts. What I wanted to do was mount this in a nice streamlined fashion. So if you look here, it's nice and tucked in, right? Looks good easy access, it's not up on my roof rack or inside of my bed. These things are pretty heavy. So getting them off your roof rack or if you have them inside your bed, like some people mount them like inside here on these rails, then you either gotta like move stuff out of the way and you gotta really reach in and it's heavy and it's hard to get to. So I wanted to mount it somewhere that was easy to get to, both for when I needed to use it, which high lifts, honestly, I don't use much 
at all. I've only used them a handful of times in my life, uh, especially with like max tracks and stuff that'll get you out of some some stuff easier that like you might have used your high lift as a winch type item for. Uh, high lifts obviously you need sometimes for tire repair and whatnot. Anyway, I wanted easy access it easy access to it both when I needed it, but also since I don't leave all this stuff on my truck all the time, I wanted easy access to it to just take it off and put in my garage when I when I wasn't going to be using it. Um, so here just made sense. I wanted to mount it here. So then I started thinking about how I was going to mount it here in this kind of wasted space that was easy to access. Originally, I was contemplating putting it on the top, but then I was like, oh, I might want to put other stuff on the top and then it's a little harder to get to. And then I had this idea to mount it over here. I was like, how would I mount it over here? I'd either have to remove these things maybe if I wanted to mount lower, I'd need to get longer bolts so it cleared them. And then also I would need longer bolts to clear like this thing too. So I have this, there's a little gap here. There's probably about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch gap here. So it doesn't hit my bed. So I said, how would I do that? Also, I'm talking about, I'll talk about the orientation. The bulk of the weight is up here. I wanted to mount it as far forward as I could realistically. I could go a little bit further forward, but I wanted to keep a little bit of gap here. You want to mount your weight when you can in front of your wheel. Your vehicle handles weight best when it's kind of in between here. If you mount it further back, although, you know, this wouldn't make a big deal in the scheme of things, you would have more weight in the back bouncing around. So anyways, if it's not any harder to do, might as well mount it this way with the weight on this side. So that's what I did. And I'll go ahead and take it off here for you real quick. So on these back two, I'm using a wing nut, a big washer, and then a locking washer as well. I'm not sure, are we focusing here? and then a locking washer as well. Uh, so this doesn't rattle loose when you're out on the trail. Uh, just because I'm kind of a stickler, I did order black stuff for all these components, but I think it's coming from China or something. I just bought them off eBay. I could probably spray paint them, but anyways, these will be black eventually for no other reason than aesthetics. So I have these two back here. And so let me go ahead and show you what I was talking about before. These are kind of smaller. When you make a high lift mount from scratch, you would want to choose a bigger bolt than this so it doesn't bend as easy, right? So you'd choose a half inch or maybe an M12. This is an M8. The reason this is an M8 is because these are M8s. So all I did here, I'll show you in a second. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this coming through and this coming through here. And then we have two more to take off over here. One, I did a wing nut again, just because they're easy. And one, I did do this one that's kind of harder to access with an actual nut. This is a 13 millimeter that you'll need for this. And I just did that to make it a little bit harder for somebody to steal. Like I said, I keep these 13 millimeter wrenches in the back. So I always have access to them because they are the same size I use for my tent and the same size I use for this. Now all the nuts and washers are off. That was four again, one back here, one here, and then these two here that just so happen to line up perfectly. For me, I'm not sure if they are like, these handles are put in here precision for everyone, but we do have a little bit of wiggle room as you can see here. Uh, anyways, these two will line up for you for sure, whether or not these ones will line up exactly how I have them in the back or not. Uh, that's up in the air. So let's go ahead and take this off and I'll show you a little more detail. So once that's off, you can see what's going on down here. So this is how the normal anchor point is attached with an Allen on this side and the nut and washer on the other side. What I did was get an M8. Uh, this is an M8 by 80 millimeter to get this length if you want to do it exactly like me. These are black bolts. I got black bolts for these at least. And these are coming through where the uh, head is on the back coming through. So there's the head and washers underneath on this side. And it's coming through here. And I have one nut. These are all nylon, wa nylon uh, locking type nuts put into here. So that kind of recesses into this area and keeps this clamp still usable. 
Then I put one on backwards with a washer. That's what keeps the high lift up high enough off of this to clear that foot like I showed earlier as well as to clear everything else. So these stay on here full time. So that's kind of the only downfall is when I don't have the high lift on here, I have these on. And what I could do is I could take these washers off or whatever and put them somewhere else. Or I can just do what I do now, which is put all the washers on and put the hardware back on when I take the high lift off. Doesn't really take much time, a couple minutes to take it off and put it on. And then you have these things. And I, at first I was like, is that gonna be bad? Are people gonna like snag themselves on this in the parking lot or something? And they're not really. So this is the, this flares out much further than that. So unless somebody was really like intentionally trying to like get up on this thing, you would never hit it. So that kind of alleviated my concern there. So the only thing you're left with then is Obviously, you have these things sticking out. But anyways, I thought that was the most elegant way to mount the high lift. Obviously, if you wanna keep it there all the time, you can, but what it means is if you have it mounted there all the time, then you can't open the bed cover. By default, without stuff mounted, you can open this, which is lockable, and this will allow you access to the front of your truck which if you watch my old Diamondback covers, they sell these cross bins and I had my bug out bag or get home bag in there and a bunch of other stuff. So that access is nice. I'm kind of, my new system doesn't use that access so I don't care as much. So if you didn't care about needing to fold your covers up, you could have that mounted permanently, but just so you know, that means you can no longer access. Now what I have here is a shovel mount system using quick fists. One here and one here. You'll see that this is kind of weird. It's not used how it's supposed to be used, right? So originally I mounted this thing before I mounted the high lift here. And then it was mounted in, well, I can't even really show you. It was mounted in this, this orientation and this was in that one and that was in that, but it doesn't fit in this orientation with the high lift jack. So I didn't feel like remounting these. I may eventually but then in this orientation, it now fits, but then it didn't reach this. So what I did was use this little Velcro strap here to just strap it in there. And that works, that works fine. Again, I'm not leaving this on my truck all the time. Maybe I am to look cool once in a while, but for the most part, it's just there for function. This is a little Fiskars, not little actually, it's like a full size shovel. Did I say ax earlier? I meant shovel. This is a Fisker shovel. It's about 25 or 30 bucks on Amazon. Super cheap, uh, affordable. The plastic does fade in the sun after a while, uh, but it's been, it's been a solid, solid shovel for me. This handle, if you're wondering, is OD. I painted it, spray painted it, because just for looks, 100% just for looks, because I thought it looked cool with the OD and the orange. My Max Tracks OD, my Pelican cases OD. So I wanted an OD shovel, but I didn't want to like try and find some OD shovel because I had this Fiskars. So I just spray painted it green. I'll link to that on, on Amazon as well. So future mods, what I might do is mount some D-rings on this side. I do have another Pelican, um, but it's, you know, I, I don't really need it. So I kind of have just been keeping this open to use tie downs and stuff. I did buy a big cargo net. Uh, to put back here so I can actually put a big cargo net that covers this whole area and just toss whatever I want on the bed as well if I'm not deciding to use my my pelican for anything Whew. all right I think that about wraps it up that was a that was a long video I think I have no idea how long it was but probably could have gone another hour if I really went even into more more detail but hopefully that gave you an idea again I'll be linking to everything that I can and remember to down below including like the bolts and nuts I bought, the D-rings, everything. So if you wanna do something like this on your setup, do it. Um, just, again, if you're drilling new holes, make sure if you care about weather sealing that you either use rubber washers and or maybe some silicone or like a foam gasket that some of this stuff comes with. And that will ensure that the Diamondback is, uh, is very weather sealed. Uh, I will probably in a future video at some point, once I kind of have everything worked out, uh, do a video on how to weather seal the bed of the, the Tacoma 
entirely because there's a lot of gaps in the bed uh, and in the tailgate outside of the Diamondback. So the Diamondback is very waterproof itself, but there's a lot of weak points in the tailgate and stuff that you have to fix if you really want a weatherproof bed. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there because I do want the bed of my truck just to have nothing, no dust, no water, no dirt in it at all. Uh, and it's much better with a cover on top, obviously, but like I said, there's still some holes. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, again, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, get subscribed to the channel, hit that notification icon, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. Really take two seconds, hit that thumbs up button. Comment down below, let me know that you liked it or let me know what you wanna see. I'll be doing more mod kind of hacks and stuff videos in the future, like how best to get your tent off with my pulley system. Maybe I'll do a video on that if you want to. Let me know if you wanna see that. Uh, I could do a video on how to turn a Pelican case into a table. Uh, Cause that is something that I, I really nerded out about, nerded, nerded out, nerded out about for a while, uh, how to do that. So there's little things like that, that I spend a lot of time thinking about how to get systems working properly. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, let me know. If you have any desires for specific aspect videos in the future, let me know. I'll continue doing videos on the Tacoma and I'll continue kind of doing more general videos uh, as well, just like overlanding specific that isn't directly related to a Tacoma. Also, if you're into guns, gear, survival, that kind of stuff, get subscribed to the channel. That's really the core of my channel. But as I've been getting into this and I've been, people have been seeing my Tacoma, they've been asking for videos on it. So I figured I'll throw those into the mix as well. Uh, it's fun stuff. I like it a lot. I'm not that involved in the overlanding community though. Uh, from what I've seen, they're kind of judgmental. Uh, but <laughs> who knows? We'll, we'll maybe, we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, take care.